Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We thank God for the Bible study today. I want you to rise up so we can pray together. I want you to commit yourself to the Lord in prayer that today's Bible study will enrich your life. And in this uh, program of church planting that we're having, evangelism, everybody getting involved, that God will help you to play your part and the church will grow as a result of your involvement in the name of Jesus. Let's pray that this year, the impact of the Bible study in our lives will be something unforgettable. That this year will be very, very different. It will not be like last year or other years when we learn and learn and learn quite a lot, but it didn't produce so much. Pray that the Lord himself will help you that you will be your very best this year for the kingdom of God. And the church will grow as a result of your getting involved. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you at this time. We glorify you and magnify your name. Thank you, Lord, because of the good things you're doing. Thank you, Lord, for those who have been converted this year, for those who have been touched this year, for those whose lives have been turned around and transformed, and for the families who are blessing. Lord, we thank you. We bless your name. Receive our praises in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord, for the Bible study tonight, and we're asking, oh Lord, that God great and mighty things you are going to reveal to everyone in the name of Jesus. Help us to reach you. Get everything that you are teaching us that these words will fall on fertile ground and produce real fruit in every life in Jesus name. Thank you Lord because we know you have answered. In Jesus mighty name we pray. Amen. Thank you very much. We can sit down. Now we're looking at first Thessalonians chapter 5. I'm sure if you were here last week, you understand. We have studied verses 1, 2, and 3. Just for you to understand the link between what happened last week and this week. The Lord had been leading Paul the Apostle, the pastor and the father, the founder of this church actually, that he is of the church to the Thessalonians. I've been leading him to remind them of the coming of the Lord. We call these studies eschatological studies. That simply means the study of the last things. You are talking about the rapture. You are talking about the day of the Lord. You are talking about the times and the seasons. We are talking about the time of the great tribulation. I was talking about the time when the Lord will set up his millennial kingdom. And now we come to this uh, passage today. We are looking at it from verse 4. But I am going to connect this with verses 1, 2, and 3. Open your Bible with me. First Thessalonians chapter 5. We are looking at verse 1. It says, but of the, of the times and the seasons. Brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For, the, for when they shall say, peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman and a child and they shall not escape. Look at verse 4. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that they should overtake you as a thief. You understand what we're looking at here? I want you to look at the pronouns there when we say he or she or they or him. And we're talking about the pronouns. You look at verse uh, 3. It says, for when they shall say. Obviously then Paul the apostle was talking about how this day of the Lord, the time of calamity and the time of doom, the time of judgment will come upon these people unawares, un unprepared. That's why I said they. They the unbelievers. They the uh, the people that are still walking in darkness, they that are not born again. And then it says, when they shall say, peace and safety, then sudden decision shall come upon them. You see, Paul the Apostle is very careful in the pronouns he's using. He's talking about they, he's talking about them, and then he says it will come upon them as travail upon a woman. And then he says again, they shall not escape. Now he changes that pronouns to so come to verse 4. It says, but ye brethren, he's talking about now you who are believers, you are children of God, you who are born again, and you say, yes, I know the Lord, I'm prepared for the coming of the Lord. Actually, you remember if you go back to chapter 1 verse 10. In chapter 1 verse 10 it says, and to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath 
to come us the believers that's what it's talking about here in verse 4 of chapter 5 it says but ye that is the people who are saved the people have turned away from their idols and the people have gone away from all those works of darkness or cultism and evil practices and all these societies they have come out of them and now they believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and they are waiting for the coming of the Lord it's referring to those people in verse 4 it says but ye brethren and not in darkness that that day shall come upon you upon your believers as a thief then in verse 5 ye are all the children of light is still talking about the people that have believed on the lord jesus christ they came out of darkness they came out of their evil and then he came into the light of the gospel the, the jesus christ is the light of the world and it says now in verse 5 but ye are the children of light and the children of the day we are not in of the night or of darkness again he's saying he even you know kind it's like he makes himself as part of them we we referring to paul and silas and timothy and then all these believers all the church of the living god we are not in darkness as the people of the world are in darkness then it says therefore let us not sleep us believers us children of the light let us not sleep as they as do others but let us watch and be sober in verse 7 for they that sleep is going back to the unbelievers now the people that do not know the lord and it says they those some believers they sleep they sleep in the night and they that be drunken unbelievers they're drunken in the night it comes back to us now the believers but let us let us who are of the day be sober putting on the breastplate of faith and love and then it says and in verse that's verse eight now it says and from helmet the hope of salvation i've read that to you for you to understand the distinctiveness between uh, believers and unbelievers there's a difference between us the believers and the unbelievers those of the day and those of the night those who have not known the lord and those who know the lord there's a vast difference a real gap between us but as you look in our day and as we approach the time of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, there's a dilemma here now. That is, there's confusion. Because so much of the, of this confused generation, eh, you cannot see the distinction between the believers and the unbelievers, between the world and the church. It's like the distinction or the disparity or the difference is almost lost. The church looks so much like the world. I'm talking about the church out there, the nominal church. The people that just say, yes, we believe the Bible. Yes, were singing the songs then were saying the prayers they were reading the press all those people that were referred to as the church the nominal church the physical church the denominational churches they look so much like the world that it is very difficult to even tell the difference between them and the world the present day believers even the people that say we believe in the lord jesus christ he is a savior he is this and he is that he heals us he delivers us even these people that say that they belong to the lord these present day believers and the modern day unbelievers they act so much alike that many so-called believers could easily be mistaken for being unbelievers but then the children of God, the children of Satan, uh, there, there should be a, a clear difference between both of them, but we can no more uh, distinguish between them because they are not too much far apart as Satan and God are far apart. The children of the kingdom is uh, the light of the kingdom is so dim that it does not convict those in the kingdom of darkness. Many so-called children of God or children of light or children of the day are only so in name. That's why we say nominal nom name nominal christians they only so in name not in truth and not in character and not in behavior and not in nature but in what we are reading about today which are going to study in depth we're, we're learning that the true children of god are so different they ought to be different from sinners in their hearts in their spirits in their lives in their behavior in their lifestyle in their character in their characteristics as the day is different from the night or as the light is different from darkness in the sight of god and from different perspectives there are only two kinds of people here in the world number one we have the believers number two we have the unbelievers number one we have the children of god number two we have the children of the devil satan another way we have number one the children of 
light and the children of darkness. Say another way, we have those who are saved, those who are born again, those who are on their way to heaven, walking in the narrow way that leads to glory. And then number two, we have those who are not saved, they are the broad way, they live permissive life, careless lives, and carefree lives. And these are the two kinds of people we have. And these two are different, the one from the other, as the day is different from the night. Their lives, their commitments, their destinies are different. The passage before us that we're looking at today contrasts these two kinds of people. The pictures and the portraits are mistakable. They are not interchangeable. That is, when you really look at the Bible, the New Testament in particular, you cannot interchange the believer for the unbeliever. The children of the day are characterized by moral light, by alertness, by soberness, by righteousness, by watchfulness. While, on the other hand, the children of of the night are associated with moral darkness and evil and unrighteousness and drunkenness and worldliness and uncleanness. The, this difference is so clear. The point is when we look at your life, you say you're a believer, you say you're a child of God, and you say you know the Lord and you believe the Bible. You're a new creature in Christ. You should be a new creature and all things should be totally different to your life. When we look at you and look at the unbeliever, we should see the very clear difference between you and the unbeliever. That's what we're looking at today. We're dividing the study tonight as usual to three points. Number one, the dark portrait of deceived sinners. There are sinners that are deceived. And you know what it says? When they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction shall come upon them. Which means that they have deceived themselves and they have allowed, allowed their pastors or their preachers or their false prophets to deceive them. The dark portrait of deceived sinners. Number two, the descriptive picture of diligent saints. Saints are the people that know the Lord. In fact, you know, there are people today, they will call somebody a saint after he's dead. There are some churches, they canonize them. They make them saints after they are dead. But you know, as we think about the New Testament, we call them saints while they're still alive. When, when, when they show the real life of the believer, you are called to be saints. Romans chapter 1 verse 7. And then all over the Bible, the New Testament says that believers are saints. But the saints are diligent. And the saints are the people that are determined. We're going to live for righteousness. And we're going to see over here the descriptive picture. We come to number three, the daily pursuit. That means you're a believer, you're a child of God. You're a saved soul. And you're pursuing something. You are telling the Lord, oh Lord, this is my passion, this is my pursuit, and this is what I am living for. I don't just do that once in a while, when you feel happy, when you feel joyful, when you feel that what something good is happening today, or when there are special programs. It's every time, every day, that your, your life is just stretched out like that. You have a daily pursuit because you are dedicated so unto the Lord. Three points then, the dark portrait of deceived sinners. Number two, the descriptive picture of diligent saints and then number three the daily pursuit of dedicated souls i come back to number one we're looking at first thessalonians and i'm reading now from chapter five we're looking at eight from verse four all through to verse seven first thessalonians chapter five we're looking at it from chapter five verse four to verse seven uh, look at your bible as well we need to get them it says in verse four but she brethren and not in darkness that that day should come should overtake you as a thief read that another way the people of the world they are in darkness. That's what he's saying. And then the day, the day of the Lord is going to come upon them suddenly as a thief in the night. Look at verse 5. And ye are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night, nor of darkness. He's saying that the unbelievers, they are of the night, and they are of darkness. Uh, you're getting the picture now. It's saying that those unbelievers, the people, is drawing their portrait here, their picture here. He's sketching them out. He's saying that if you want to know who is a believer, you want to know who is an unbeliever, you want to know who is a sinner, you want to know who is a saint, you want to know those who are following the Lord, you want to know those who are not following the Lord. Here it tells us that the people who are not following after the Lord, they are of the night. And then it's is, they have darkness. It says in verse 6, therefore let us not sleep as do others. As do others, what do the others do? They sleep. They slumber. 
they're insensitive they do not understand what the lord is saying for this day and for this hour and what the lord requires in their lives because those sinners they are asleep and he says let us watch and be sober what does that say about the unbelievers they are not sober they are frivolous they are careless and they are carefree and the, the people that they're not challenged you know the things of the world so grabs their heart that the things of the lord is not important to them he says but you are different and therefore you ought to watch you ought to be sober and then look at verse 7 it says for they that sleep sleep in the night and they that be drunken are drunken in the night what is we talking about the day of the lord if you go back to verse 1 it says but of the times and the seasons brethren ye have no need that are right unto you verse, verse 2 for ye yourselves know perfectly that the day of the lord so cometh as a thief in the night so he's talking about the day of the lord and he's saying that there are people that are very near the brink of destruction they're very near the coming of the day of the lord and yet they remain sinners the day of the lord will come suddenly upon deceived sinners while they live carelessly and they say assuring themselves peace and safety then sudden destruction will come upon them and it says they shall not escape i pray that will not be said about you you will escape in jesus name it says over here these sinners are these sinners are portrayed as of the night already together already they are portrayed as of darkness you've seen that already in the passage and it says they are the people that sleep that is they neither watch nor be neither are they sober and then and it says that they are also drunken these are men that are insensitive to the times and the seasons in which we're living all sinners are in spiritual and moral darkness they sit in darkness according to psalm 107 verses 10 and 11 and it says they even sit in the shadow of death and they rebel against the words of god and they contempt that is they despise the counsel of the most high these men they love darkness other than light because because their deeds are evil and when you are talking to them anytime you are coming near near home and saying hi about this and once they feel guilty they do not want to experience the pain of guilt and of conviction you know why they're not willing to change they're not willing to give their lives to the lord and to say lord yes i know i'm guilty i know i'm condemned i know if i died in this condition it will be hell straight ahead and now i want to get to heaven i want your love and i want your mercy i want your forgiveness i want your salvation they're not ready for that because of that because they love their darkness rather than light that's why they because their deeds are evil that's why they remain the way they are they hate the light and they hate anyone that will bring the light unto them they hate the lord jesus christ because he is the light of the world and they hate the preachers who are sent to bear witness to that light and hate believers who are letting their light so shine before them but he that hated his brother john tells us in first john chapter 2 he that hated his brother is in darkness and he walketh in darkness and he knoweth not whither he goes because the darkness has blinded his eyes as we look at the bible we find the characteristics of these sinners and you see the portrait that the lord draws and as we read all this i don't want you to throw all this to your neighbors and yes i know mr so-and-so i know mrs so-and-so i know miss so-and-so i know that that's the kind of life they live well they are not here the lord is telling you about this so that you'll be able to examine yourself to see whether you're in the faith or not whether you're in the light or not whether you are walking according to the precepts of the word of god or not he doesn't want us to take the word of god accept the word of god read the word of god to judge other people but to judge ourselves and to know whether we're in the lord or we're not in the lord that's why the lord is giving us all this and therefore apply this yourself and then if you find that you're in darkness there's a way out you just say lord i know you are the light of the world i don't want to remain in darkness i believe on the lord jesus christ to take away my guilt my condemnation and all the all the punishment of my sin i believe that jesus christ is my substitute he bore all my shame and everything that's what the lord is telling us this but if you discover that you're in the light already then you want to rejoice and say praise the lord i'm in the light i thank the lord it's not by merit it's by the mercy of god i thank the lord because he's done this for me and i want to remain ever in the light and in the truth follow me to the bible now we're looking at john chapter 3 john chapter 3 i'm reading from verses 19 and 20 
20 john chapter 3 we're looking at verse 19 here are the very words of the lord jesus christ himself this tells us then that some are in the light some are in darkness and then you'll be able to tell the people that are in the light and the people that are in darkness will be able to tell from the passages that we're reading together we're looking at john chapter 3 verse 19 and this is the condemnation that the, that light is come into the world but men love and men loved darkness rather than light because the deeds were evil it's saying that we don't have any excuse you and i don't have any excuse you in particular you're hearing the sound of my voice and you're at the bible study today and the lord is saying the light has come jesus christ has come you have heard his name you have heard that he died on the cross you have heard that he came to forgive us you have heard that he came to take away all our sins you have heard that salvation can be ours through the lord jesus christ you have heard there's no other name given among men whereby we can be saved except through the name of the lord jesus christ you have no excuse i have no excuse if any of us remained in darkness it's our fault and the lord will punish us for remaining in darkness when you could just have been saved by having jesus christ as your personal savior it says this is is a condemnation that light is come into the world and the men have heard about him and men have seen him and yet it says and they remain in darkness because the deeds are evil look at verse 20 for everyone everyone that doeth evil hates the light if you hate the light that shows what camp you belong to if you hate bible doctrines that shows where you belong to if you hate bible study that shows where you belong to if you hate some passages of the bible and say hey, hey don't read that one because that one condemns me that one uh, criticizes my lifestyle that one is going to make me feel guilty and condemned if you hate some passages of the bible it shows where you are but if you rejoice a prayer is the lord as the word of my heavenly father he's sending his word to me he's correcting me he's helping me to understand this is the way to live i just rejoice in everything the word of god is revealing that means that you're a child of god but it says everyone that doeth evil he tests the light neither cometh he to the light lest his deeds should be reproved and let's look at romans and then you'll see the characteristics and what these people do that the lord is saying here is a challenge people have and when you're able to come out of that and then you're able to say praise the lord i come out of darkness praise the lord i come into the light and i want my light to reflect the gospel and to reflect that jesus christ is present and is uh, prominent in my life and then we, we, we praise god for you because now you we are showing that you're a real child of god we're looking at uh, romans chapter 1 i'm reading from verse 21 romans chapter 1 verse 21 because it says they because that when they knew god they glorified him not as god neither were thankful but became vain in their imaginations and their foolish hearts was darkened and that tells us then the darkness is not just on the outside the darkness actually begins on the inside because they have not got the light in their soul in their spirit in their heart they have not got the enlightenment of the spirit of god the illumination of the spirit of god and the word of god that bring it, that brings light in a pathway they have not accepted that in their heart it says their foolish heart was darkened look at verse 22 it says professing themselves to be wise they became fools in verse 23 and they changed the glory of the uncorruptible god into an image made like unto corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and it says and creeping things look at verse 24 wherefore god also so give them up unto uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts and dishonor uh, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves it says they're not only neglecting god they're also dishonoring even their bodies between themselves and these are the days you'll find a man and a man coming together and they say they they, they mess up their lives they dishonor their bodies or it may be a woman and another woman coming together and they dishonor themselves and the, the provision the lord has made that a man would leave uh, you know father and mother and then join together with his wife a man and a woman in holy matrimony all that they abandon and they get into all these kind of lives that mess themselves up or maybe a boy and a, a boy and a boy or a girl and a girl and the lord is saying this is 
evil and people don't want you to talk about that today because their deeds are evil in fact it says in verse 25 they change the truth of god into a lie and they worship and serve the creature more than the creator who is blessed forevermore can you give me an amen there thank you very much we're looking at verse 26 it says for this cause they gave them they give them uh, god give them up unto vile affections for even their women did change the natural use into that which is on which is against nature it because they become unnatural and when you look at the lives of some people some things they do as if uh, you know it's like they're back into the animal kingdom it's like uh, they're just unnatural things it's things you cannot even repeat in the public because they're so shameful and the lord is saying that these people do this and they don't have any shame they don't think about this and that this is wrong because of being in darkness and being in evil it says that god even gave them up to their vile affections and then it says in verse in verse 27 likewise also the men living the natural use of women that is they abandon the provision of the lord what the lord has said is not good for the man to be alone i'll make and help meet and suitable and feed for him all that they abandon they're not thinking about they're not thinking about a man and a wife they're not thinking about something clean and something holy and something righteous all they are thinking about is just to uh, give vent to their foolish practices and it says that they leave the natural use of a woman that is the normal the normal relationship and they burnt in their lust toward one another. You've heard of what we call the entertainment industry. It is filled with immorality and lust and all these perversions. And they rejoice in that. And sometimes when you see some able-bodied men, able-bodied women, they gather together in all these theaters or in the cinema house and all that. And they'll be shouting and they'll be a kind of pressing things that are evil. Whether it is murder or it is rape or it is all these evil things it shows you the darkness in which they are living and the lord is saying it's going to be there's going to be a day of judgment the day of the lord is coming and when that day comes it comes upon them suddenly i pray that you will not be in that in jesus name if you're not going to be in that you know what you're going to do you give your life to the lord jesus christ and you live the life that is glorifying is pleasing unto the lord if you look at verse 28 there are people that have gone so far they've got, come almost to the point of no return that the lord just says it's all over with them in verse 28 and even as they did not like to retain god in their knowledge god gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient what do they do what the lord is saying is not pleasing unto him what do they do that the lord is saying these things are not convenient what do they do that the lord is saying this is unnatural this is unreasonable and this will not help us to get to a good place in eternity what are those things look at verse 29 and you know god has not changed there are people that try to change the vocabulary of the bible they try to change all these things and you know what the bible calls by this name and it's, that's a work of darkness that's a work of the flesh they call it now by a new name they say well that just means that this or means this or means that and there are people that will rejoice in that change of vocabulary but you know whether you call a man a woman or you call a, a, an animal a friend whatever you call them they're still who they are and the lord is saying let's come back to the language of the bible because that's the language of god if he says something is wrong that thing is wrong if he, if he says something is evil that thing is evil and he says all these things are the things that show the portrait and the picture and the and the appearance of a real sinner it doesn't matter which church denomination you are attached to if all these things are there you don't belong to the lord you need to come to calvary once again by faith you need to come to the foot of the cross once again by faith and say lord i must be cleansed lord something must change in my life and become different let's look at the list in verse 29 being filled with all unrighteousness fornication wickedness it says covetousness maliciousness they're full of envy murder debate that is arguing against the word of god you know people hear the word of god they immediately come into a debate 
I don't like that. I don't accept that. I'm not going to give in to that. I have my own opinion. I want to suggest that this and this is not your suggestion. It's not your opinion. We're talking, when, when the day of judgment comes, we're not going to be judged by your opinion, by my opinion. We're not going to be judged by what somebody is suggesting. We're going to be judged by the clear black and white clarity of the word of God. And it says debate. If we're into debate, into arguing with the word of God, it is sinful in the sight of God. It might just be a debate in your heart. Am I going to accept that? Am I going to receive that? Am I going to give in to that? Am I going to obey that? All that argument is sinful because you are proving that you know more than God or maybe you know as much as God and God is saying this is wrong and then you are having a debate. You need to repent and turn away from that and accept the word of God at this value that this is what god had said i believe that i accept that and that is what actually brings uh, us into uh, the relationship with the lord then he says deceit malignity and whisperers and he says backbiters haters of god and despiteful and proud and boasters inventors of evil things think about that it says there are people that even invent evil things those evil things were not there before and that's why some people say i cannot find a smoking in the bible how do you say that smoking is wrong do you understand they invented that after after this thing i've been reading i cannot find this i cannot find this all these new new things that people are doing and then they get into evil they are inventors of evil things uh, they, they're so evil that their hearts and their minds will generate and produce and invent bad things evil things and the lord is saying whether they are new things who have invented or new things they have invented or new things they invented over the television and over the internet or whatever new kinds of sin of evil coming up today that was not there before the lord still says he's going to judge because of those sins and then you say but biters haters of god and despiteful and proud and boosters inventors of evil things disobedient to parents think about that young people uh, you, the young people that rejoice today are the fact you know i told daddy i won't take that i told mommy i won't take that and they think that's a good thing they think that you know they are being righteous and uh, they are becoming a man and they are becoming count adults when they're able to say no this is why i stand daddy you cannot say that again or teacher or principal you cannot say that again but do you know that all those things are sinful rebellion is sinful in the sight of god stubbornness and self-will all sinful in the sight of the lord and then he tells us in verse 31 without understanding covenant breakers without natural affection and it says implacable uh, your merciful who knowing the judgment of god that they which commit such things are worthy of death and then it says and not only do the same but have pleasure in them that do what in them that do them i'm coming to um the ephesians chapter 5 i'm looking at verse 11 and to verse 14 ephesians chapter 5 we're looking at it from verse 11 11. Here the Lord is telling us uh, these people of the what it look like. And he is giving us all these uh, descriptions so that we'll know that the deceived sinners are liking to those who sleep. That the people are unconscious of the danger around them. Uh, these people, they are, they are also liking to those who are drunk. They are drunken men. They are insensitive of their state and their, and their lostness. They, they sleep upon the top of a mass as we are told in Proverbs chapter 23 spread over a very deep chasm about to sink into eternal doom and damnation yet they're sensitive yet they're unconscious and yet they're unconcerned unaware of their danger and their approaching disaster which threatened to overtake them their condition is compounded by the pitch darkness and drunken stupor in which they remain in Ephesians chapter 5 I'm reading there from verse 11 it says and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness but rather reprove them you see reminding us that those who are in darkness they're unfruitful and those who are sinners they have not come to the light of the Lord Jesus Christ or the light of the gospel then darkness then it says a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret but all things that are reproached 
are made manifest by the light for whatsoever doth make manifest is light uh, look at verse 14 it says wherefore it says awake thou that sleepest it's in, uh, we shouldn't remain in that condition if you are still there insensitive unconcerned unconscious and carefree the lord is saying don't remain like that awake get up out of that situation awake thou that, that sleepest and arise from the dead and thank god the lord jesus christ shall give thee light we have the promise of the lord that whosoever shall call on the name of the lord shall be saved we have his promise that the moment you come whosoever comes to me i will you know why it's cast out you can come today you can come today you can come to the lord today and say lord all over now enough is enough with all this darkness and drunkenness and evil things i come to the lord and when you come to the lord you come to the light that brings me back to first thessalonians chapter five first Thessalonians chapter five i'm reading now from verse uh, four first thessalonians chapter five we're looking at it from verse four and you're going to see what the lord is saying here about the person that has come to know the lord about the real child of god about the one that is saying yes i turn away from darkness from evil from the world and from all the drunkenness and i turn to the lord let's read from chapter 5 verse 4 it says but ye brethren are not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief it's like you know when you move from one city to the other you are in a before now you come to city b and i could easily tell you you're no more in city a praise the lord you are now in city b or maybe you are in a you know class one and then you have moved on now to class two and i'm saying praise the lord the other time last year when i saw you were in class one but now you are in class two that's what he's saying here he's saying that those who are sinners uh, you, you, your past you are in the dark you are in darkness you are in evil you are into sin you are in the kingdom of darkness but now it says because you have repented because you have turned away from darkness because you've come to the lord jesus christ as your personal savior because now you believe on the lord jesus christ and your sins are taken away that's why it says but you now brethren you're no more in darkness you are in the light and the day will not come upon you unaware some prepared look at verse five ye are all the children children of light is talking to these uh, Thessalonian believers and you know that these are people that they turn away from idols they're serving the true and the living God now and they're waiting for the coming of the Lord and it says now that you are no more what you used to be you're not children of the day we are not of the night we are not of darkness look at verse 6 therefore let us not sleep as do others but let us walk let us watch and be sober it goes on in verse uh, verse 7 talking about the people that are in darkness and asleep that we are different as it says but she brethren are not in darkness ye are all the children of light and children of the day uh, the, the brethren here those are the believers who have been called out of darkness into god's marvelous light the brethren here are the people who by repentance have turned away from spiritual darkness moral darkness and society darkness and they have abandoned and forsaken and renounced all the works and the deeds of darkness these are the people that are broken all contacts and covenants with an association with people and principalities and powers of darkness they do hear what i said and they do it's there in your outline it says that the people that are broken association with or any covenant with the past of darkness or people of darkness or principalities of darkness and then by faith they have turned unto the lord jesus christ as the light of the world not just the general light of the world as the light in their lives and they have believed on the lord jesus christ the light of the world and they have received the light of the gospel in their hearts and it says now they walk in the light as he is in the light and the blood of jesus christ his son cleanses them from all sin those are true believers that's why he calls them in that passage he says they are brethren if you turn back to verse 4 there he says but ye brethren these are the people who are no more abiding in darkness they're not dwelling in darkness they're not walking in darkness these are the people believers the people and these are people are not lost in darkness in the darkness of sin or the darkness of evil or the darkness of idolatry or the darkness of occultism or satan worship true believers do not deliberately remain in the darkness of damnable ignorance damnable heresy damnable false doctrine and there are people 
well, I can't understand why they think like that. They're into false doctrine, and they know that what they are holding on to, what their preachers are preaching to them, what their pastors are preaching to them, is contrary to the Bible. Even when you show them, and you say, yes, I'm born again, I'm a child of God, I know this, I know that, and I belong to a Bible-believing church, and at the same time, they're not living according to the Word of God, and what they're receiving from their churches, it's all false doctrine, and they still remain there, and the Lord is saying here that if you're a real child of God and then you say you belong to a place like that in damnable heresy damnable false doctrine the Lord is saying that is not right it says if you are brethren you are not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a seed these believers who are always in a state of readiness they are not people who are sleeping they are in a state of readiness for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ they do not sleep no as others do others sleep spiritually unaware of spiritual danger and but they do not others sleep the sleep of death as we're told in Psalm 13 verse 3 uh, after drinking uh, the milk of the enemy and they just sleep off like that you, you read that story in Judges chapter 4 verses 18 to 21 but thank God these people were awakened these people really know the Lord and love the Lord they are not like that other people sleep a perpetual sleep during the time of divine visitation and the harvest of souls as we are hearing that God himself is saying that we need to reach out now and they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word but you know there are some who are just asleep and they are not concerned of the souls who are perishing but the Lord is telling us that these people they do not because they are real believers and then it says you know, it then cautions us and it warns us and alerts us look at verse 6 therefore let us not sleep as do others but let us watch and be sober it is that alert, alertness is that sobriety is that watchfulness that shows that we are real children of God because we are conscious that the Lord will come at a time when many people are not expecting John chapter 12 I'm reading there from verse 35 John chapter 12 verse 35 reminding us and alerting us and warning us that if you really say you've come to know the Lord here is what you do your walk in the light you walk straight and you walk according to the scripture and you walk according to the true revelation of the word of god in john chapter 12 verse 35 hear what it says then jesus said unto them yet a little while is the light with you walk while ye have the light lest darkness come upon you for he that walketh in darkness knoweth not whither he goeth look at verse 36 it says while ye have the light believe in the light that ye may be the children of light this things with jesus and departed and did hide himself from them it tells us then that as we are children of god morally walk in the light spiritually walk in the light we live actually in the light we abide and dwell in the light and in every way in our relationship people men with men and men with women and women with men and boys with girls and girls with girls and all that every relationship will keep in darkness you don't do anything in the secret that you know you'll be ashamed for people to know you'll be ashamed if you if you knew that somebody actually discovered what you had done if you are ashamed of the way of the way you are living in the secret it means you are walking in darkness but when everything is plain according to the word of God and it's nothing to be ashamed of and you have clear conscience before God and before man that is what the Lord is telling us I'm looking at Romans chapter 13 Romans chapter 13 we're looking at verse 11 Romans 13 verse 11 for it is written as i live says the lord every knee shall every knee uh, shall bow and uh, every tongue shall confess uh, to god uh, that's uh, so then every one of us shall give account of himself unto god that's chapter 14 but that's telling us that uh, the way we live and the things we do we're going to give accounts to the lord and we're walking in darkness you'll give account of that to the lord and we're walking in the light you're going to give account of that to the lord uh, come back to chapter Searching and look at verse 11 and see what the Lord is saying and see the way the Lord wants us to live so that on that final day when everybody will be given account of themselves, of their lives, of the life they lived on earth before the Lord, there will be nothing to be ashamed of. You'll be able to say, Praise the Lord, the blood of Jesus washed me and cleansed me and purged and purified me. Praise the Lord. He gave me the grace to live the kind of life that shall be glorifying unto His name because you allowed yourself to be taught, to be transformed 
transformed by the word of the Lord and you came into the light. I'm looking at chapter 13, Romans verse 11. And that knowing the time that now it is nigh, it is high time to awake out of sleep for now is our salvation that's the final salvation final redemption when we get to the lord directly our salvation is nearer than when we believed the night is fast spent the day is at hand let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light is saying that as we come to the lord and we're children of god now we walk in the light then it says in verse 13 or in verse 13 let us walk honestly no fraud no fraudulence no evil no stealing nothing that you know bribery and corruption behind uh, somewhere and giving somebody something that doesn't actually belong to him you're doing the right thing and you're walking honestly and it says not in rioting or and drunkenness not in chambering and wantonness and it says uh, not in strife and envying but ye put ye on the lord jesus christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill the lost thereof those are the people that are walking in the light and then the things that people do shamefully and it says even a shame to talk about those things all those things you have rejected all those things you have abandoned all those things you have repented of we're looking at ephesians chapter 5 ephesians chapter 5 i'm reading here from verse 8 it says but ye was sometimes for ye was sometimes darkness that means in the past you were walking in the dark you are walking in darkness but he now says that but ye are now children now ye in the light in the lord and then he says walk as children of light you see he said watch to walk to match your life walk to match your profession walk to match your experience in the lord look at that verse eight again for ye were sometimes darkness ye were a past tense you are no more like that if you are born again you no more walking in darkness if you're a real child of god it says ye were sometimes darkness but now are ye light in the lord walk as children of light then it says in verse 9 it says for the fruit of the spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth proving what is acceptable unto the lord you're proving what's acceptable is this all right will jesus do this will jesus walk like this is this walking in the light or walking in darkness you see there are people people that just live their life they don't ask any question they don't wonder is this acceptable is this pleasing to god is this according to the word of the lord does this match my profession my confession my testimony they don't ask those questions but if you are a child of god those are the questions you are asking we're looking at philippians chapter 2 philippians chapter 2 verse 15 it says that she may be blameless and harmless sons of god i pray that will be your experience then it says without without rebuke in the means of a crooked and perverse nation among whom ye shine as lights in the world holding forth the word of life that i may rejoice in the day of christ that i have not run in vain neither labored in vain i pray that all this thing that we are reading the lord himself will make everything work out in your life and my life and our lives all together in jesus name let's think about this what if all of us hearing the word of god what if all of us in that location where you are in in that church location where you are in that district where you are and in that satellite church where you are what if every one of us will just walk like this according to the light the people are in darkness uh, have you noticed something when people are inside darkness in that room and then they open the window and they can see somebody walking in the light and he's walking there's no fear there's no shame and there's no there's no insecurity there's no danger at all they want to come out of dark dark darkness into the light but you know if you are living a life that is not very sure i'm not very certain not very clear and it's like you know we don't know whether it's different from us or not people will not want to give their lives to the lord let your light so shine that you are walking in the light you are holding forth the word of god that in the day of judgment we who are your preachers and your pastors will not be ashamed because you have walked in the light of the gospel as you have learned then the people outside will like to come and they would like to say praise the lord i think i want to be like that brother i want to be like that sister i want to live the same transparent life and the same righteous life and the same 
clean life as that brother or that sister is living. I, th I believe that that is what the Lord is calling us to. And in this new year, the Lord is saying, live like that. So that by the grace of God, other people will be attracted to the Lord through you. And the Lord is going to do it for you, for me, and for all of us together in Jesus' name. We're coming to point number three now. We're looking at uh, First Thessalonians chapter 5. And I'm reading from verses 8, verses 6 and 8. But six first, therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. Look at verse 8. But let us who have the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love and for an image, the hope of salvation. There are some things I want to point out there to you. I want you to look at those words. Let us, let us, let us. It's saying the apostles. And the pastors and the preachers, Silas, Timothy, Paul the Apostle, let us, then the church in Thessalonica, all you believers who are brethren, brothers and sisters of the Lord Jesus Christ, members of the family of God, let's have the same goal, let's have the same vision, the same passion. Let us, it says, let us not sleep as do others. Let us watch and be sober. Then it comes over, it still uses those two words, let us who have the day. Be sober, putting on the breastplate of righteousness, of, uh, of faith and love, and then from earning the hope of salvation. Another thing I want to point out is what you find in verse 8. It mentions number one, faith, mentions number two, love, mentions number three, hope. It brings everything together. We have love for the present, we have faith because of what Jesus Christ did in the past, and then hope for the future, the past, the present, and the future. Yes, we have faith because he died for us on the cross of Calvary. That took place many years ago he paid the price for redemption for salvation for forgiveness he actually paid the whole price so that as we have faith on what he did in the past we're having love for god today we're having love to one another today and then we're having that hope in the future and that's the believer his past is settled his present is redeemed and then his future is focused on the glory that is to come and then as you think about that let, let's look at you uh, you know, I'd like to say one, two, three, four. And let's look at them now. One, two, three, four. Number one, let us watch and be sober. And that is, you know, sometimes when you are when these things are thrown at you and you are not you are not saying, Have I done number one? Let me tick that and mark that. Have I gone through number two? Let me do let me tick that and mark that. We're saying number one, let us watch and be sober. Are you watching? Are you watchful? Are you sober? Are you looking very carefully at everything that you do? Are you looking at the path you are treading? Are you looking at the way you are taking? Are you looking at the things you are doing that this is according to the will and the word of the Lord? Number one, let us watch and be sober. Number two, let us go of the day be sober. He repeats that again. That's why we have repeated it. He said, are we of the day? Are we children of God? Do we have the light? Are we walking in the light? Then let us be sober. When you think of the carelessness and the frivolity of the society in which we are living, when you think of the, uh, the, the people like to be entertained, they come to church, they want entertainment. Even students that go to school, instead of te the teacher keeping to the curriculum and syllabus, all they want is for a child to tickle them. All they want from the teacher is for him to entertain them. And if we just go through life in the, you know, in the um, classroom, in the church, on the street, in the market, everywhere, all we're looking for is entertainment. How are we going to really be serious in life? Therefore, it says, let us be sober. Number three, let us put on the breastplate of faith and love. And then number four, let us put on the bread, the helmet of hope. And it says, if I summarize that last verse in verse eight, let us put on faith, love, and hope. Such exhortations starting with letters, they are bound both in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. The apostle here summons all believers uh, to daily unbroken, unwavering commitment to do all that is necessary so that we can be ready for the Lord's return and so that we can escape the wrath of the day of the Lord. The biblical admonition of the biblical injunction, the biblical commandment includes having the assurance of the new birth. That is, how can you be sober without being born again? How can you be watchful without being born again? How can you have love and faith and hope without being born again? Therefore, the very foundation of these things that someone says and says, let us be this, let us do this, let us go this way, let us walk that way, is 
calling us number one let's make sure we have the assurance of being born again and then after that the abiding grace of god in our lives and then walking by faith and walking in love and walking in the light and walking as he christ walked and walking to please the lord in all things let me just go through with you and let us look at some of these passages that says let us let us let us do this that means um, the preacher is not exempted the apostle is not exempted the overseer is not exempted this is for everyone everyone all the children of god you know it's in the church in the world that the preachers will say do as i say and not as i do because they don't understand that if we're expecting the the members to manifest new life the preacher himself must manifest new life if we're expecting that the members should keep a godly family the preachers themselves should keep godly families everything we're expecting from the members we too we should have the same and that's why Paul the Apostle said, let us, let us do this. Because he counted himself as part of the family of God that you all should do that. And let's look at First Corinthians chapter 5. First Corinthians 5, I'm looking at verse 8. It says, therefore, let us keep the feast. Those are the words again, let us. It's not just throwing it at you. You live a righteous life. I'm a preacher. I don't need to live a righteous life. And you make sure that you have a conscience void of offense toward God and toward my well. I'm a preacher i'm excused from that and you make sure that whatsoever you want others to do to you do so unto them as well but you know i'm a preacher i can do whatever i like but you members you cannot do like no it says let us the preachers and the people the ministers and the members the leaders and the followers we have the same grace we have the same salvation we're going to the same heaven and therefore the same thing is required of you of me of every one of us in verse 8 therefore let us keep the feast not with the old leaven neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness but with the leaven bread of sincerity and truth it's telling us that sincerity should mark everyone's life preacher and people sincerity should mark every Everybody's life that means the leader and the followers we're looking at second corinthians chapter seven second corinthians chapter seven we're looking at verse one you know the words we're chasing the words we're looking for let us let us do this let us walk this way let us go this direction let us participate in this let us let us be like christ second corinthians chapter seven verse one having therefore these promises dearly beloved let us cleanse ourselves what i say then cleansing or holiness or righteousness is both for the preacher and the people listening to the preaching it's both for the leaders and the followers it's both for the apostles and the uh, people that are coming after him it says let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and of the spirit perfecting holiness in the fear of god that's telling us that the preacher doesn't have any liberty to live a, a promiscuous cost life, a dirty life, an unrighteous life. It's not only the members when it says, without holiness, no man shall save the Lord. That's both for the preacher and the people. Let us cleanse ourselves from all unfeeldiness and then from uh, from all fieldiness and from all uncleanliness. Let's look at Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3 I'm reading there from verse 15. Philippians chapter 3, verse 15. Uh, telling us the same thing. It's good to go through the verses of scripture so that you will know. Are you are you a worker, a Christian worker? Are you a leader, a leader in the church? Are you a pastor, a pastor in the church? Are you uh, any of the you know great uh, people and God has raised us up to do this and do that? It doesn't excuse us. Responsibility and work and labor and evangelism and crusades that does not excuse us from living the life that is pleasing unto the Lord. The minister and the members, let us apostles and all the followers let us and the pastors and the members of the church let us look at uh, philippians chapter 3 i'm reading from verse 15 let us therefore let us therefore let us therefore as many as be perfect be thus minded and if in anything ye be otherwise minded god shall reveal this even unto you and then it says in verse 16 let nevertheless wear unto we have already attained let us walk by the same rule 
let us walk by the same rule let us walk by the same rule uh, you, you know how wonderful it is when you know the preacher that is preaching or the pastor that is pastoring and he says hey church this is what you do and then he himself he leads the way in doing that that's a wonderful thing but you know when he just gives out the word and he says that's the commandment of the lord and this is what the lord is saying and that's what the lord is saying and then he says you must do that and then he expects the people to do that but he himself there's no change but saying that this is a new year this is a new life and this is a new focus and this is a new direction and this is a new thrust in the church and everybody now is involved let's go and evangelize and let us do let us do this the very fact we are saying let us evangelize makes makes means that you know the pastor is there means that the coordinator is that the district pastor and then the zonal pastor there and then the women leaders who are there let us we do this together it's not just a sending people out and then we are sitting back at home then it says in verse 17 brethren be ye followers together of me and mark them which walk so as ye have us for an example we're looking at first timothy chapter 6 first timothy chapter 6 and we're reading there from verse 8 first timothy chapter 6 and we're reading from verse 8 remember what we're looking for we're looking for those words let us it says having food and raiment let us be their ways content. And I'm saying that uh, our lives should be free from covetousness. That we were children of God. Both our leaders, our preachers, everyone. Our lives should be free. We should be content with what we have. And then it says in verse 9, But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful laws which drown men in destruction and perdition for the love of money is the root of all evil once again let me remind you that's for the preacher too that's for the apostles too that's for the overseers too that's for everybody too you know sometimes you are shocked sometimes some of these preachers they come and thank god it doesn't happen in this church thank god it doesn't happen in your local church where you are but you know i'm talking about the church in general now and they'll come already they they rich they're super rich and then they come to the church and say now you're going to sow a seed and the poor people that are living from hand to mouth they expect these people to still contribute and be able to kind of increase their prosperity can you think about that and you seen here the love of money whether for the preacher for the pastor for the overseer for the members for anybody the love of money is the root of all evil which while some coveted after they have erred from the faith and they have pierced themselves through with many souls but thou O man of god it says flee these things and follow after righteousness and godliness and faith and love and patience and meekness i pray that that will be your lifestyle that will be my lifestyle so that all of us can say we're living and walking by the same road look at verse 12 fight the good fight of faith fight that temptation and fight that thing that wants to destroy the faith that you have in the lord and erode into the faith the body of truth that you believe fight that good fight of faith and lay hold on eternal life whereunto thou art also called and has professed a good profession before many witnesses we're looking at um, hebrews chapter 10 the lord is saying that those of us who are children of god we need to get something done and he says let us do this and over and over in the scriptures it tells us that this is our responsibility as children of god hebrews chapter 10 i'm reading from verse 22 let us draw near with a true heart in the full, in full assurance of faith let us apostles and preachers and pastors and overseers and members of the church and everybody the new converts and the old timers let us draw near with a true heart not a deceived heart and not a false heart not a divided heart and not a covetous heart a true heart cleansed in the blood of them washed by the water of the word let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water uh, have you noticed there it mentions conscience you see when we're children of god we always want to keep our conscience clear our conscience is clean purged and preserved in the blood of the lamb when we became a christians many years ago we had tender consciences if we did anything mistakenly or said anything mistakenly that wasn't 
doesn't try it, we, we, we will remember. We go to the people who spoke. I'm, I'm sorry, my brother. That thing I told you, I colored it a little bit. I exaggerated a little bit. This is the real truth. That's why we preserved our conscience from, from evil. And all the things we did before we were born again, you know, we stole there, we did something there, another person's advocate. We went, we went back and we made all those things right because Jesus said, when well, you bring your gift to the altar and there you remember that something has somebody has ought against you that you leave your gift there at the altar so that your worship will not be the worship of a fool that is just worshiping and worshiping not knowing whether it's acceptable to god or not we went back to those people we corrected everything and here is sin we maintain that we maintain that pure conscience we maintain that clear conscience and we maintain a life and a conscience void of offense toward god and toward man but you know the people that claim to be christians and they they stop on every toe and they push everybody down they're envious they're jealous they're evil they're the kind of they're callous they don't have any feeling for other people and they just and they still come to church and do whatever they are doing all that is not the real christian faith the lord has given us it says a conscience of a purged and purified from evil then it says in verse 23 let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering for he is faithful that promise and then in verse 24 let us consider one another to provoke to influence to inspire unto love and to good works i notice something here look at verse 22 let us look at verse 23 let us look at verse 24 and let us uh, which means then is saying that i'm involved you i'm a preacher i'm involved you are a preacher you're involved all of us were involved so that we can be who god wants us to be we're looking at hebrews chapter 12 and we're looking at it from verse 1 Hebrews chapter 12, and we're reading from verse 1. Wherefore, seeing ye also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside. As we come to this new year, this is just uh, like the beginning of the second month now in this new year, and the Lord is telling us that there's a lot to do this year. The race to run, churches to be planted, and the work of the Lord to be done. And he's saying, let us lay aside every weight. Uh, there's some things you'll not be able to do if you don't lay aside some with some preoccupations, some things that bog us down, some things that tie us down. And the Lord is saying, we have a lot of witnesses before us. Uh, that's referring back to chapter 11. We're talking about Enoch, about Abel, about Abraham, about Sarah, about Noah, about Isaac, about Jacob, about Moses, about Rahab, about all the... Then says, what shall I most say? All these other people that live for the glory of God and he did this and he says now it is your turn now it's my turn now it's our turn together and he says if we're going to run this race set before us let us lay aside and you know we've been talking about discipling a whole nation that is done there is a saturating our communities with with churches as we're doing that we're going to lay aside everything that is a non-essential everything that is unimportant everything that is going to hinder us that's what he's saying here let us lay aside every wage and the sin and the sin that does so slave beset us and let us run with patience we're going to run this year is a year of running it's a year of doing something for god it's a year of doing something for the glory of god a year of evangelism a year of church planting a year of bringing other people out of the world out of darkness and bringing them into the light and it's saying you are ready i'm ready and we are ready together and we're going to do this together in jesus name let us therefore run with patience the race that is set before us and while we're doing that in verse 2 looking unto jesus the also and the finisher of our faith who for the joy that was set before him he endured the cross this year there are things to endure we're going to endure and there are things that we're going to overcome we're going to overcome them in jesus name despising the shame and he sat down at the right hand of the throne of god because he consider consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest he be wearied and faint in your mind. This year is not a year of fainting. It's not a year of um, kind of getting weary. You do a little thing, then you are tired. You do a little evangelism, then you are tired. I did that last week. I went out with them last week, and I was involved last month, you know. But this is a new month, a new challenge, a new responsibility coming upon you and upon me and upon us together. We're going to keep on doing it until we finish in Jesus. 
Jesus' name. Look at verse 28. And remember what you are looking for? The words, let us, let us. In verse 28, chapter 12 of Hebrews, verse 28, wherefore we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved. Let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. And then let's look at Mark. There's something very interesting here. It's about the Lord Jesus Christ, about his life, about his passion, about the way he did the work of God. And he's telling us, he's passing the same thing across to us because you are a Christian. He's Christ. And Christ followed, uh, Christians follow after after Christ. And he's saying, as Jesus said, let us do this, we too were declaring this year, let us go ahead and do this. I'm looking at Mark chapter 1. Mark chapter 1, verse 37, also to verse 39. And when they had found him, that means when they found Christ, they said unto him, all men seek for thee. And he said unto them, let us go into the next towns, that I may preach there also. For therefore, came I forth. And he preached in the synagogue throughout all Galilee and cast out devils. I want you to notice in verse 37, uh, somebody came to the Lord Jesus Christ. Actually, Peter came to the Lord and said, Lord Jesus, you know what? All men are looking for you. You are so popular here. You are so accepted here. And then come and do this again. And the Lord was saying, I said this before. I said it at the end of the year, 2010. I think I said it in this new year, 2011. And I said, it is not right that one person or a group of people will hear the same message a thousand times when there are people who have not had it once. Think about that. That in your community, there are people who are coming to church and there are people who have been coming for many years. They have had the message over and over and over. And the people are saying, we're waiting for you here. We want you to be here. Speak to us again. And the Lord said, yes, they've heard. And because they have heard, they're responsible. You have had enough to be saved, enough to be sanctified, enough to be ready for the kingdom of God, enough for you to be ready to escape all the things coming upon this world, but then there are people who have not had that's why Jesus said in verse 38 he said unto them, let us go into the next towns, that I may preach there also, for therefore came I forth, and when he said that, he put that into practice, and we're saying the same thing, the Lord is saying, let us at this year this new year, let us go forth and do what the Lord wants us to do, plant churches, evangelize the people bring them into the kingdom, decide Paul them, bring in new people, and let the church of the living God continue to grow. I'm now going to end with this verse in Jeremiah, because God had a controversy with the people of Israel. What was the controversy? They were not saying, let us do this. And if we don't say the same thing and practice the same thing, the Lord is going to have controversy with us. In Jeremiah chapter 5 and verse 24, neither say they in their heart, let us now fear the Lord, a God that giveth rain both the former and the latter. In a season, he reserveth unto us the appointed weeks of the harvest. These are the appointed weeks of the harvest. Weeks run into months and months run into years and years run into decades. And I've told you already from this 2011, this is the beginning of the decade of evangelism and church planting. It's actually the decade of dawn for us. D-A-W-N. Discipling a whole nation. We're believing the Lord that we're going to have thousands and millions of churches. Not my word. Thousands and millions of churches because this is the decade of church planting planting, saturation church planting and a decade of evangelism and the Lord is saying, we should be saying to ourselves, let us arise and do it and let us go forth because he has reserved unto us the appointed weeks of the harvest, we will do it, I said we will do it, you will do it I will do it and we are going to do it together and we are saying, let us rise and put our necks uh, to the yoke and our shoulders to the burden and let us rise up and do what the Lord has called us to do, why don't you stand up now and we're going to pray together. You're going to commit your life to the Lord. You're going to say, Lord, I am going to be involved in this. We've seen what the word of God says. The day of the Lord is coming. And the Lord is saying, get involved and get something done. I appreciate your standing up. I appreciate your praying. I appreciate your talking to the Lord.
Lord and saying, Lord, I'm not going to hear the word of God in vain. Here am I, Lord. Here am I, Lord. And you're not like other people saying, Here am I, Lord. Send my neighbor. Here am I, Lord. Send my brother. Here am I, Lord. Send my sister. Here am my Lord. Send me. Let's do it together. Our hearts, our resources, our money, everything we've got, our time, our treasures. Bring everything together and let us see how to do this for the glory of God. I'm going to do it. Oh Lord, I'm going to be involved. Oh Lord, I'm not going to allow this week to pass again, this month to pass again without getting involved and being the same the Lord has called us to do. Are you of darkness or the light? Are you of the night or the day? Are you actually believing in the Lord, standing for the uh, faithfully for the word of God, or are you still backsliding and doing those evil things and chewing all those things and smoking all those things and drinking all those things that are not according to the will of God? Come out of that drunkenness and come out of your carelessness and out of your frivolity and let's come out of all these uh, things that are going to bring damnation upon the people of the world. And let us say, Oh Lord, we just want to be our best for you this year and let us have the real the real testimony of being born again or being converted that will say yes i know i met the lord i can show you the place i can tell you the time when i repented of my sin and now i'm of the day now i'm of the light and i know that the lord is for me and i am for the lord and then the child of god is living as a child of god all things are passed away all things are becoming new and you are telling the lord oh lord that same life i want to live the life that jesus lived the life that the early apostles and the early disciples lived i want to live that kind of life anything to correct in your life anything to put right in your life anything to straighten out in your life why don't you tell the lord the lord has grace he has love he has mercy and the cleansing blood of jesus is so the efficacious for everyone and he'll wash you and cleanse you and put you and make you as clean as you ought to be wash me lord and make me whiter than snow so that your picture your portrait will not be that of the deceived sinner it will be that of a diligent saint of a real child of god walking in the light and by his grace you're letting your light so shine before men and they will see your good works and glorify your father who is in heaven tell them lord oh lord let me live a life that will attract the attention of the people around me attract them to you so they will see you through my life the lord will do it and then remember the lord is saying let's be up and doing the lord is saying let's have a clean conscience the lord is saying let's have a clear conscience if you are sleeping over guilt and condemnation your conscience will not be clear if you have stolen things and you're not returning them to the owners you're just coming to church and you're just professing that you know the lord your conscience will not be clear but when everything is clear you've cleared all your your conscience and then you've told the people and they're forgiving you and you know that there's nothing you're hiding that will just make you to live a life that you know is so victorious and say no lord i thank you you give me grace to do that and now there's no guilt there's no condemnation and i know that if i died today i'll be able to you know be with the lord and then i'll be able to rejoice because i have been cleansed by the blood of the lamb and the lord is saying this decade of evangelism is started already already can you see now the first month is gone and now we're in the second month and the lord is saying what did you do in that first month others are serving the lord did you serve the lord others are witnessing are you witnessing others are preaching are you preaching we're planting churches are you part of it let us arise and do it together let us arise and shine let us arise and walk let us arise and be watchful and be sober let us arise and put on the breastplate of righteousness and the best place of faith and that of love and, and let, let us have the hope in the lord the faith in the lord all the promises you believe and then the love in the present day you are uh, serving the lord with other people and then the hope in the future that you're saying oh lord i thank you because should the lord come today thank god is getting me ready thank god is getting me ready and when he comes i will go with the bread of the people of god and the lord is saying let us go to other towns let us go to other territories let us go to other communities let us go beyond this your local church where you are here and let us go over there and plant a new church over there plant a new church touch the lives of people around you this involves you this involves me let's all come in and do that together the same passion the same pursuit the same desire and the same focus and the same sacrifice commitment let us arise and obey the lord and the lord will bless us and the lord will reward everything we do both here and all eternity to